five ways to fill a sketchbook page. Hello, I'm Caroline and today I thought I'd show you five ways that you could fill your sketchbook pages up. For the first one, I need to mix up a nice palette full of very watery colours. And so I'm using my little flower shape palette and we've got a nice assortment of colours there. Now you can either draw circles, but it really doesn't matter for this. You can just relax and hand paint, just freehand, lots of coloured circles in all the different colours in your palette. Now I've decided to be a little bit selective here. So I've done red, pink, oranges as the circle. You can do a bit of everything, but I think this will make it a little easier for the point of the exercise if you really want a point. You can just enjoy it and not have a point if you don't want to. Now you can either mix paint in your palette or you can do what is called glazing where you paint one colour over the top of another dry colour and then you still get a colour combination but it just looks different if you've mixed the colours up. So by putting circles down first we're putting the first colour down and then we're going to put the second colour down. For stage two I'm going to use the other colours on my palette so I'm going to use the turquoise, the green, the blue and the purple. I think these circles look a bit like bubbles, so I'm going to do a wavy line. If you want to do a straight line, you can, or if you want to do different colour blobs. Now you can see with that one wavy line, we've now got turquoise over the top of yellow, orange, and a ready pink colour. Right, let's try with the purple. And again, it's interesting to see the interaction of the colours. Sometimes the colours granulated together, sometimes they didn't. It's so all interesting stuff. This is so relaxing and therapeutic and you can't get it wrong. I love art that you can't get wrong because you can completely relax because just the feeling of the brush against the paper and the relaxation of knowing there are no constraints, no limits. You just do what you feel like doing is wonderful. Now, if you want, you can just leave this as it is, as a study of colour glazing to see what the effects are. But I love to fiddle. I'm terrible. I'm never convinced something's finished. So I decided to make this a little bit more interesting by adding a few different things. So I'm going to go around these circles with a black unipin liner. Just a fine one. It's actually called a fine liner, but I've used quite a thin one. You may decide you want to use a thicker one. You could even choose to use a colour. I just decided to go with this thin black one. This again is another really relaxing thing to do. This is one of the most relaxing ways that you can fill your sketchbook. Is having something with no rules. Just kick off your shoes, settle back at your desk and paint away. Right, I think it's time for some pizzazz. I love a bit of pizzazz on my pictures. So I'm going to use my Como Rebi, their metallic watercolour paints, and they're really creamy. I did do a review on these paints and another video. I'll leave a link in the description below. They are so nice to use. So I think we'll put some dots on these just to make them look a little more like bubbles, but they're not really like bubbles. So it doesn't matter if they don't quite look like bubbles, if you see what I mean. I'm just purely decorating them for the fun of decorating them. And I think this would benefit from little dots in the plain pieces too, so I'm going to add them there too. metallic effect on camera so I'll wiggle my page like that you can see I think that's like a happy bubbly picture it's filled up a sketchbook page with no stress on me whatsoever that was all fun now number two isn't exactly starting from the beginning but you may have a sketchbook page that is looking really boring and plain if a lot of your sketchbook is bright colors and some of your pencil sketches just disappear into the background you can see here I've been sketching some hair designs. So just get yourself some colours and colour over the top of the hair. But don't just colour a solid colour because you can learn such a lot from experimenting and playing with your colours. So when you decide what colour you're going for, 
think of another colour that you think would go well with it and just blob it in. Perhaps put little bits where shadows would be or just go over it and blob them anyway. The purpose of this is one, to make your sketchbook look really pretty and two, to give you a better understanding of how paints work together. So you're learning while having a lot of fun. Mm, now what colour shall I do this here? I've got all this paint I made up in my palette. I'll go for orange, I think. So we'll pop some orange on there. And what colour is going to go well with orange? Hmm. I think I'll put some red where I would imagine shadows would be. If you're going to do this, make sure that the paint you're using is very wet so that instead of just lying on top of the paint, it will merge together. Oh yes, I think that looks lovely. These are techniques with here you may not want to try on a finished piece because it just seems like, oh, what if it goes wrong and ruins all my hard work? You can't ruin this. It's already been done. It's already in your sketchbook. And so you can try things that maybe you really wouldn't try anywhere else. Be brave with those colours. Give it a go. If only it was this easy to colour my hair. Oh, I'd have a different colour every day. <laughs> is another relaxing way of filling a sketchbook page. So the first thing I do is colour in a circle with water. A lovely wet gooey circle. This sketchbook I'm using isn't the best one for saturating with water but it'll do the job. It's only my sketchbook, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to enjoy it. Right so I'm going to get some purple and just blob it around the wet bit and see what happens. Let it do its own thing. If you watch the edges, it's great fun to see the way the colour wiggles and merges into the water. Right, let's add a little bit of red around here and see what happens then. You can see little tentacles of colour wandering through the water, seeing what it can find. Right, a little bit of orange in the middle of this one, I think. Oh, I like that. Already it's starting to look like a polyantha. Right, let's put a little bit around the edge. Do a line this time. Why not? Oh, is it a fried egg with a burnt edge? Add a little bit of yellow here. So we've got more of a subtle colour change and see what happens there. Blob this about a little bit too. Right, next circle. For this, I think we'll put in some red. Yes, I like the red. And what can we put with that? Now this one is much wetter than the others and you can see much more swirling going on. Ooh, I love it when the edges of the paint swirl. Right, let's do another one. Now you can see I didn't completely wash my brush out, but it doesn't matter. I'm thinking, well, maybe this will give me some sort of under colour, almost like an initial wash. So we've already got a tint and now I'll put some yellow ochre on there and see what happens. Oh, I do like that. Already you can see like a three-dimensional flower forming with very little effort whatsoever. Right, another one. Ooh, I'm really enjoying this. It's so easy to do. It's so much fun. And I'm learning all the time, which makes it feel like time well spent. Right, we put some cerulean blue around here. Perhaps some little faint dots rather than a lot like we put on the edge of the red one and see what effect that has and we'll put thicker on the bottom see if that will turn into a flower or not it may it may not all right we need to do something in these gaps let's put a little bit of blue in there Ooh, we can fit another one in here but i think i'm going to do this one differently i'm going to put on paint mm, it's dragging too much of that red in for me so let's start from the middle and see what happens. It's just blobbing everywhere. Oh, you can't beat a bit of blobbing. Oh, that's a completely different effect to the other red one I did. I'm just going to put a little bit of purple in the middle here and see if we can get these to come out like flowers. I wasn't sure what I was going to turn them into, but 
The more I see, the more I think I'd like to turn these into some sort of flower. Hmm. Let's just fill in the little gaps with a bit of purple too. Just let it all swish around. We'll fit another one here. Lots of water. And in with some colour. Uh, try the turquoise. I really love turquoise. At the moment, it's one of my favourite colours. It wasn't in my initial palette when I bought it, but I did get some second-hand watercolours, and in it was this, and some indigo. I hadn't tried indigo, and I really like the indigo too. But turquoise definitely my favourite at the moment. Right, let's try putting some of the Como Rebi metallic paints in the middle here and see what happens. Oh, it's amazing to see what's happening there. You can see all the glitter particles all wiggling and moving about like they've suddenly come to life. It's like a glittery snow globe. Oh, I love that. Oh, yes. I can see lots more dropping metallic watercolour into water in my future. Right, for my last one, I'm going to put lots of yellow in a circle and then I'm going to drop the colour into the very watery yellow. So a bit like when I didn't clean my brush off properly, but this time it's very purposefully. And we'll drop in some green dots. See what happens. Well, they're spreading, but they're not spreading quite the way I was hoping. Shall I do something with that or shall I just let them carry on spreading? I'll leave them do their thing and we'll put another circle up here. I'm sure we can fit one in here. I'm so enjoying this. Right, so this time we're going to add some yellow to the middle. Let that spread outwards. Hmm. Perhaps we'll give it a little helping hand. There we go. Now what are we going to do with that? Oh, we can do anything we like. This is wonderful. Oh, I think I'll put on some green in the middle, I think. And we'll wiggle it about. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, that's fun. Can we fit another one here? We'll, if we're going for flowers, we'll pretend this one's a bed. So this has got a bit of turquoise in from my dirty water jar, but it doesn't matter. We'll put some green on the bottom and we'll put some blue on the top. See if they run into each other. Oh, I think we can fit another one down here too. Why not? It's only going to be a little one, but we can fit one in. So we'll put some yellow ochre around there and we'll put a little bit of blue in the middle. Yep, that's cute. Looks like a little flower. And I think we'll put some gold from my Como Rebi palette. Mix it up. I love mixing these. They're so creamy. So put some gold in the middle of this ochre one here. It's still wet enough that you get the sparkle effect. Oh, I love doing that. That's the advantage of making them very wet. You've got plenty of time to stop and think, what am I going to do now? And if they do dry up, then just pop a little bit more water on. There we go. That one's nice and wet now. And we're going to come in with the gold paint. Oh, look at that. You can see all the particles wiggling around and shimmering. Right, where can we put some other glittery bits? I'm into this glitter now. It's going to be glitter everywhere. <laughs> and make them look nicer with a fine liner. So we're going to turn these into flowers. So we'll put some stems and we'll put some little backward facing leaves under some of them. And it just draws it together. Now you can leave it like that. You can colour a background around it if you want to. It's just for me, after I started, I thought, hmm, these really are taking on a floral look. So I'm going to do flowers. It's really simple. I mean, you can, if you want to, paint on lines or do whatever. But I quite like the simplicity of the black fine liner against the 
complete technical crazy look of all the spludgy colours and the metallic paint all working its way through it. So I think it just adds that balance. Again, this is another thing that's just so relaxing. No stress to this at all. You can just settle back. You can even put your book on your lap and watch the TV while you do this. I was thinking maybe they'd be in a vase or a vase, but I think they look nice just as a wild, crazy field of flowers. So I'm not going to put anything at the bottom. They're just coming up from the bottom of the page. I'll have to take the washi tape off, but I don't really think I needed it, did I? <laughs> Other than the one up in the corner and the one down the bottom, which were afterthoughts, I wouldn't have needed to put it on. Well, these are really coming together. Oh, this is so therapeutic. I know I keep saying it, but this is such a relaxing, fun thing to do. You can add leaves in any shape you like. You can add stems in any shape you like. You can add some interest to the centre of the flower. You can draw on some petals, so the petals are more defined on some, more abstract on others. Whatever you fancy. It can't be wrong because it's your creation. I bet you're going to turn out some fabulous pictures like this. I'd really love to hear how you get on with this technique. Right, time to take the washi tape off and I'm getting in a right mess here. <laughs> this tape is just falling to bits. But I don't mind. And this is one of my least favourite washi tapes. I've got some lovely ones. Somebody bought me some off my Amazon wish list. And oh, they're beautiful and they're pinks and they're golds. But these ones are from a job lot when I first started out doing art. I didn't want to pay a lot. Somebody was selling off all the ones they didn't like very cheaply. I bought them. And I don't like them either. So I'm quite happy to use these up. Throw them away and they're gone. Page number four. You don't need a compass to do this. You can draw it freehand if you want to, but I've used a compass because I'm not very good at circles. And then you fill in your circle once again with water. Water's a big feature of a lot of this painting we're doing today. Right, let's get a bit of blue and just put it in places. Now, I want this to look a little bit of a nod to it being the world, but not so much the world as a world. So I don't want to put land masses and things like that where I know they would be on our globe. Because this could be anybody's globe. It's just a planet somewhere out in the universe. Again, very relaxing. You can just blob away, do what you feel like, and look at the feathered edges on those. I'm going to add a little bit more water because my page is sucking up the water, <laughs> crinkling away like mad. And you may have noticed I've forgotten to clip down the edges of my paper and I've forgotten to put the washi tape on. So this is going to be interesting. Right, now we're going to put on some grey, but I'm hoping this is going to dilute down quite light because I don't want it being really dark. I think we'll be fine because of the amount of water that's on there. And if it stays too dark towards the end, we'll just wiggle it about a bit and get it to spread into the water. Like that. Already it's starting to look three-dimensional. Isn't it? Even though it's just a flat piece of paper and really with no skill or talent, you can do this even if you're an absolute beginner. This would even be something good to do with a child, I suppose, during the summer holidays. If you end up with a very rainy day and the children are bored, then get them to make beautiful watercolour worlds. You could do any colour you wanted, couldn't you? You could do green ones, orange ones, black ones. Now, I can't resist, we're adding more silver. <laughs> I just love this metallic silver effect. So rather than just have all grey, we're going to put lots of silver in. Again, though, it looks like a lot, but it's such a small amount you actually use. These are very good value for money. And I am a big fan of value for money. If you've had a stressful day or if you've got a stressful issue coming up, then this is a brilliant way to just switch off your brain Switch into art mode, and before you know it, you'll be completely relaxed. The only problem is you may never want to stop. I could paint for hours. It's so much fun. People can say, what did you do all afternoon? Well, I was watching metallic paint wiggling its way into water. And they'll say, oh, right. Very good. <laughs> right, I think we'll put some on the blue. Why not? They're, oh, yes. I like that. And I'm really impressed with how this is looking three-dimensional. Because I've made no efforts at all with shading or anything, I thought it could possibly just look like a disc, but it doesn't. I wonder if that's because we're used to looking at the moon or pictures of the earth and we know in the backs of our minds that they are actually a globe, not a circle. 
Right, now we really need to get this well dry before we carry on because otherwise the colours are going to run. Right, now it's time to paint the background. It looks a little bit weird putting turquoise on. There's two reasons I'm using turquoise. One, I just love using turquoise. And two, it makes it look like there's a little bit of sky that's lit up around the planet, but not right out. It's not in a full daylight sky. So we're going to put this on, but make it quite wet. And this is why it really is essential to have the main part of the globe nice and dry because you don't want that paint wandering on, as you saw happened when we put other colours into colours or colour into water. That would have happened on the edge of the globe and then we'd have ended up with a very messy edge. Get that nice and wet. And as close to the edge as I can without getting on the globe. Well, I may have gone on the globe once or twice, but nobody's watching, so I'm okay. All right, now, making sure I keep a gap between the edge of the purple and the globe, I'm going to go around like this. Again, another therapeutic thing to do. Just splodge it on. You haven't got to be too careful. But I really do wish at this point I'd had washi tape on because I tend to make a bit of a mess <laughs> around the edges of my paper. I'm making sure the darker purple is merging into the turquoise. And already you've lost that strong turquoise colour and it's looking quite nice. But now I need to darken the outer bit even more. So I'm adding a little bit of blue into the purple. I'm coming up with this. I think ideally I'd have liked a smaller globe so that I could have more darkness around it. But if I'd done that, I wouldn't have had so much fun painting the globe. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Right, so there it is. Look at that. Now that is so impressively three-dimensional. I really love it. You can almost see the globe sticking out. Oh, I'm very pleased with that. But we need some stars. I could flick some white gouache on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use my Posca pen. Because even before you start, you could use masking fluid and put some white blotches and then at the end rub those off and you've got your stars. I quite like doing this though because it would have been quicker if I'd done the spattering technique. But this is another relaxing thing to do. And you can draw as few or as many stars as you like. You can do them the size that you like. You can even do a pattern because there are many star constellations if you wanted to copy some of those or make up your own. I've just gone for a mixture of small and big blobs. I do love a good blob. No pressure when you're making a blob. Nobody can say, that blob's not right. I can say, it's a perfect blob to me. And we're done. Sketchbook page number four. And for this, I'm going to use my flat brush from Zen Art. It's faux squirrel. Now, you can use a narrow brush or a wide brush. Now, I can see already that I've not got enough pigment in the paints I've already got mixed up for this. Because what you want to do is to get lots of wiggly lines in different sizes, different shades, all different shades. Or, if you like, you can just keep them to one colour group. I'm trying to focus on turquoise and purple. See? Turquoise again. I know, I'm an addict. You can draw wiggly, wiggly lines. You can draw curly, whirly lines. You can draw zigzaggy lines. I'm going to try using my brush on the side this time. Ooh, I like using it that way to make a thinner line. Again, another great learning process. It's amazing how much you're going to learn as an adult through playing with your paints. And it also fills your sketchbook up. You look very prolific. I think these colours go quite well together, so I'm using purples, turquoise, greens, blues. I wasn't going to use green, but I really think it's doing something for the picture, adding the green. You can do as many as you like if you want to do more than this or less than this. I just did it until I thought, mm, that looks about right for the effect I want. Right, now when you've done all your lines, let them dry or blow dry them, and you're ready for stage two. Right, stage two. If you want to do this, entirely optional, it's a circle stage because I like painting circles. So using the same colours, I just look where there's a bigger gap and painting a circle. Random colour. If you're using a limited palette, then stick to those colours and just put some little circles. I think this adds to the look of being underwater and bubbles down the bottom of the sea. Don't worry if they're not perfect circles, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to use some more silver. I know I just can't resist, so I'm going to put some silver blobs. And I think they actually coordinate quite well with the blues, purples and greens. 
give it a quick blast with a hairdryer. You definitely need this dry before you start working on it. And for stage three, I'm going to use my Pigma Micron. I'm going to use a Note 0.5, or is it 0.05? I'm never quite sure. But you can use whatever thickness suits what you fancy doing. It's all down to you expressing yourself. And then you're just going to cover all the lines you've done with different patterns using your Pigma Micron or your Uni Pin or your Crayola marker, whatever it is you've got. The only thing I would say with this, if you've got a really expensive fine liner, for example, a Copic, I haven't got a Copic myself, so I don't know if it would damage the nib, but I do know that drawing over the top of watercolour paper really does eat away at your nibs, and I find it really frustrating that there is still ink left in my pen, but the nib has gone. I think it would be nice if one of the companies would bring out a replaceable pen nib for their cheaper version. I know the Copic ones you can get refillable ink and refillable nibs, but I don't think you can on any of the cheaper ones. I could be wrong. So just don't use your best or your most expensive pens for this. I suppose you could even use a well-sharpened black coloured pencil, or you may even get away with using a nice soft graphite pencil. Hmm, yes, you probably would, especially if the colour palette that you've used suits that. Oh, now that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Do it all in shades of grey and then using a very soft graphite pencil over the top. And then it would all be whites and greys. That would be very nice. And you could even, now I'm thinking, use some black thick lines of paint as well and then use a white Posca pen over the top of that. Hmm, so many exciting things you can do with this very basic idea. Right, so all this is, is doing little N shapes, I suppose, right up the length of the line. Don't forget not to go over any parts where another stem or line is going over the top of the one you're drawing on. Otherwise, it gets very confusing. Right, I've got a thin one here. Now, this is going to be difficult to come up with something this thin. So I'm just going to do a wiggly line all the way down to the bottom. And then when I get to the bottom, put some dots each side in the bump of the wiggle. <laughs> I don't think that's the technical term in each bump of the wiggle, but you know what I mean. Right, for this one, I'm using the one edge as a base and I'm going up in like a leaf shape, a very abstract, random leaf shape, admittedly, all the way to the top. It's very difficult to show you what I'm drawing from this angle. You can see the pattern sticking out of the bottom of my hand and we're working our way up. This reminds me of the poles on carousel horses. They're a little bit like this, a barley twist really, but this looks a bit barley twist, even though it isn't. And as you're working your way along, draw a black line, if you like, around the circles you've drawn as well. And that really brings them forward and makes them pop. Right, I think we'll do a zigzag one on this one. Hmm, does it look a bit bare though? I've got an idea. <laughs> it's not guaranteed to work, but we'll give it a go. I'm going to go from the point of each triangle, inside the triangle, to the other edge. To fill it up a little bit. Now, I don't know if that's going to work. Let's see. Hmm, no, I, it's not my favourite pattern, but still, moving on. It's our no-stress sketchbook. It doesn't matter. Right, let's see what I fancy doing on this one. I think we'll do, like, it made of leaves with lines on. Again, not the actual technical term, that. So we just work our way from one end to the other, drawing a sort of leaf shape coming out from the last leaf and then drawing lots of lines down to the base where it came from. Part of the fun is deciding what pattern you're going to put on the next one. Now on this one I'm going to put curvy lines and I think that will make it look a little bit more three-dimensional than the others, almost like a womb. Fun to do and also you can see here by adding a pattern on top of the watercolour even if your shading is really off, it doesn't matter. I'm going over a dark bit, I'm going over light bits, and it just all blends in and almost gives it, again, a three-dimensional look. It looks like it's curling backwards where it's darker and forward where it's lighter. Now, this one is very thin. It's going to be difficult to find a pattern that works, so I'm going to do little circles all the way from top to bottom, almost like a chain of pearls. 
the one advantage with having to go between the lines of this is it does make you focus and concentrate and this is brilliant if you are really stressed over something because it takes your mind completely off whatever's stressing you you have to focus so hard not to go too big with your circles and off the lines and even with some of the other patterns it really is a relaxing therapeutic thing right now this one I'm going to try something I've done before, but I've only done this with proper markers, not using a fine liner. It really isn't the ideal tool for colouring in. Right, so by doing like a U shape and then another one underneath, joining the sides, it makes it look like there is something like a ring actually going around this stem or whatever you want to call it. It can look really effective if you use a solid black, but I'm really munching away at the nib of my pen, so I'm going to come up with a different way of doing it so I use less of the fine liner on this pattern. Now, you can do uniform sizes all the way down. I like not to, because if you try doing uniform sizes, they may not all look uniform, and it stands out. But if you deliberately do all different sizes, then it just looks like you wanted random sizes. So again, you can't get it wrong. I love it when you can't get it wrong. So there we go, we've got a row of those and now I'm going to decide how I'm going to fill these in without ruining my pen. Right, so we'll do some stripes and some circles and some triangles, all different designs. See whatever comes to mind. And if nothing comes to mind, I can revert to another pattern I've already done further up. And also by doing this, you can see there's substantially less of my fine line and nib being chewed. Oh, I think that looks quite nice. It doesn't look as organic maybe as the other part, so maybe I wouldn't have been quite so zany. And maybe I wouldn't do zany like that again unless I was doing all zany ones. But it did save my pen. And I don't want to stop filming to go looking for another one, so it'll do the job. Right, I think on this one I'll do like an assortment of shapes. So we'll do a pointy edge and then some circles and some tubes and then some circles and a pointy edge coming to another pointy edge going the other way i know it's really weird isn't it but it's different and i don't really want to repeat the pattern on this one so there we go it gives me a different idea i have noticed though that the patterns are getting much more cluttered the further over to the one side we go so i would be aware of that next time just to try and give it a bit more of an evening out an evening out. Ooh, <laughs> out for a meal and a dance. So there we go. There's another page of the sketchbook filled and that looks really technical, doesn't it? It looks like you've taken quite a while to figure out how to do this technical feat of engineering and it was really easy. I'm sure you'll manage that and it'll look fabulous. For more ways to fill your sketchbook, then why not subscribe? And I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget... Draw every day and have fun. Bye.